about it all and bring in Gilbert Garcia. He is managing partner at Garcia, Hamilton and Associates, CNBC contributor. I kind of joked the other day, Gilbert, that 5% return, meaning 5% is the new 25%. Should we feel good about that? I think we should, but I'll tell you what, you know, bonds may be down, but they're not out. And when you look at the old 60-40 split, there is no doubt the 60-40 split this year is probably the worst in almost 50 years. But I think when you look at those time periods when it's done poorly, it typically was followed by some very strong performance. And that's what we see next year. Yeah, and you know, we were you you probably heard my comments, Professor Miskin. I was like, I'm only half joking. We're writing economic history as we go on. This was the single worst year ever for both stocks and bonds. Usually one goes down, the other goes up. That's why every financial advisor in the world is like, you gotta diversify your portfolio. It yep. didn't work this year. Why not? Well, sure. It, it shouldn't be a surprise to us that something strange would happen. And the reason is the government has been the buyer of last resort that artificially brought levels way too low. Keep in mind, the government owns 30 percent of the treasuries, the tips market, which, of course, inflation protect the treasuries and the mortgage backed securities market. And that's what's distorted everything and distorted the risk allocation in the marketplace. And so if you go back to the key fundamentals Money supply has grown at a historic pace. Fiscal stimulus rivaled World War II. It was inevitable that inflation was going to be higher and longer than transitory. And both of those things are now gone. And, you know, and it's funny you say that because you saw the results of our poll and people push back and it's fine. Good debate. And they say, well, it's COVID. We needed to do it. I don't think anybody disagreed with the initial reaction to COVID from March to September of 2020. It was terrifying. We're under our desks on the East Coast. I know you guys in Texas kind of just did what you wanted. But a year later, everyone kind of knew the story. Half the country was back to wide open, and they're still stimulating. Well, that's the whole point. I think they handled it brilliantly during COVID. But what happened was they should have stopped buying securities, stopped the quantitative easing by the fourth quarter. By the fourth quarter, we already saw inflation starting to run hot and the 5 6% and accelerating. They should have already stopped buying, and they should have been already raising rates much sooner in calendar year 22. And I think they're making the same mistake, Brian, because they keep looking backwards. They want to wait till employment goes higher, uh, unemployment. But by the time that happens, we're already in pain. If you look, there's no more fiscal stimulus, and money supply is not only not growing, it's negative. And that's yeah. always been a precursor to a recession. Well, and I, I want to be positive, but, and you know, all that spending added a few trillion to, to our national debt. We wiped out 10 trillion from the equity markets alone, and we'll probably see a couple trillion wiped out of real estate. It's going to be like a 20 or 30 trillion dollar uh, cost. It's, it's mind boggling, but I want to be optimistic. Gilbert, have a happy new year. I can't even count a trillion. It's just too many, too many <laughs> too commas. Many but, but thank you for all the talk about Houston. But don't forget, you left out two things. We have the best Mexican food and the best baseball team.